Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a scallop brush that joins up. This is because one of my subscribers contacted me with a really amazing solution that she came up with for getting her scallop brush to join up. And whilst it worked for that particular brush, there are some underlying problems with the solution in that it's not applicable to every brush every time. So we're going to look and see what the problem is and how we can control the way that our brushes join together and even overlap. So I have a document open here in Illustrator. I'm going to create the shape we're going to use. I'll go to the Ellipse tool, hold the Shift key as I drag out a circle. Over the top of this, I'm going to place a rectangle. I'm using the rectangle as a cutting line, so I want this bit down here. Select the rectangle and the circular shape. Go to the Pathfinder which is just here, and click minus front. If you don't see the Pathfinder palette, choose Window and then Pathfinder. This is the shape I want. I'm going to increase the stroke width. I'm going to turn off the fill because I don't need a fill. And I'm going to the Direct Selection tool. I'll just select over the top line here and press Delete. So I'm just left with this almost but not quite half circle shape. To make this into a brush, we'll go to the Brushes panel, click New, and choose Pattern Brush and click OK. This time I'm going to turn off the corner tile because I don't want to confuse you in a minute when we have a look and see what this brush comprises. I've got everything else selected that's fine. I'll just click OK. Let's have a look at how this brush paints. So just drag out or draw out a line with the pencil tool, select the line and apply the brush to it. And not unsurprisingly, it doesn't join up. This is the problem. It's supposed to be a scallop line and the ends don't overlap. So let's see what it is that Illustrator is giving us when we create a brush. So let's just go and drag this brush out of the brushes palette. And I'll select over it. I'm going to the layers palette and let's just open up the layers palette so we can see what this brush actually comprises. The brush comprises this sort of not quite semicircular shape. There's nothing surprising there. We wouldn't have expected anything else probably. But this is a surprise or it might be a surprise to you. It's a bounding box. It's a no fill, no stroke rectangle. You can see over here it has no fill and no stroke. And the bounding box is created by Illustrator if we don't create one. So we could have created one, but because we didn't, Illustrator created it. And what it does is it says, OK, this is the edge of the brush. This is its left hand edge. This is its right hand edge. And when you butt another piece of brush up against it, it can't go over this line. So this is what's happening. The brush strokes are just lining up along this line, the line at the edge, the edge of the bounding box, and that's why you can't overlap them. And there's no tool inside Illustrator in the brushes panel for creating an overlap. If we just go into the brushes panel here, double click on the brush to see the brush panel options, we could increase the spacing so we could add that at say 25% we're increasing the spacing that's just fine but we can't add a negative value and so we can't make the shapes overlap any other way than controlling this bounding box so let me just get out of there this is a shape that Illustrator gave us we've got the semicircular shape or almost semicircular shape and we've got the bounding box let's target just the bounding box let's zoom in and let's change the positioning of the bounding box I'm going to bring it in just slightly. I'm going to bring it in on the left hand side and on the right hand side. So it's pretty much halfway across the very tip of this brush. And what that will say to Illustrator is that this is where I want you to start the next brush stroke, across the end of this one. So these are now going to butt up together. To make this a brush, I'll select both the semicircle or near semicircle and the bounding box and I'll click on new. I'll click pattern brush, click OK, click OK. So you can create a bounding box for any brush and if you create the bounding box yourself, you can control how the various brush elements butt up against each other. There are a couple of rules about bounding boxes. They absolutely, absolutely have to be no fill, no stroke rectangles, and they have to be behind everything. So you can see here that in the stacking order, we've got our shape and then our bounding box it has to be in that order. If the bounding box were on top, it wouldn't behave as a bounding box. Let's go back out. Let's select our line, 
click our new brush. Your new brush is always added at the bottom of the brushes panel. So this is the first one, this is the second one. Click on it, let's zoom in, nice join. It's a nice join, but it's not the prettiest of joins. It might look really nice if it had a sort of rounded cap. So let's go and see how we do that. Let's go back to this brush element. Let's make sure that we're just targeting the brush this time, the bit that we want to be the brush, not the no fill, no stroke rectangle. Go to the stroke panel and create a rounded cap. That's just a slightly nice end for our brush. Go back and select everything. Have to select the shape, have to select the bounding box. Bounding box has to be at the back, has to be a no fill, no stroke rectangle. Nothing magical about that. It's the exact same process. Click new, make it a pattern brush, click OK. And because I know this one's going to be perfect, let's set our colorization method to tints that will allow us to recolor the brush. The brush is going to be colored according to the current stroke color. I'll click OK. Let's select over the line. Let's click our new brush. We know it's the new brush because it's the one at the bottom of the brushes panel. And here is our stroke, our scallop brush on our stroke. Nice rounded end. And with the line selected, let's make sure it's selected. Let's go and change the color to prove that the colorization method set to tints will allow us to recolor that brush. So that's how you can control the overlap for any brush in Illustrator. Create a bounding box to tell Illustrator where it's to start the next brush stroke. If you want an overlap, it's going to be inside the shape that is going to comprise your brush. I hope that helps you. I hope that you've learned things here about Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell. If you do that, you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.